It was great to have uh, so many members from around the country, uh, from so many different sites, together to focus on safety. But it's important that we're engaging our rank and file in having the fight on the job to make sure that we go home safe. We've had too many deaths in our industry um, and we've just got to stop that now. We've got to fix it now and our members are the answer to that. What are some of the resistance that the employees are showing Maritime Union members? Oh, it's the same thing, you know, money talks and uh, it's money and it's the same thing that's going to change that mentality is you've got to hit them in their pocket if you're going to change it. They need to understand it's probably far more economical and makes more financial sense to actually have decent safety practices in the place um, whereby you know their insurances aren't going up, their workers' comp isn't going up, they're not paying out massive payments in terms of death payments etc etc. So there are benefits in coming along and joining us to make sure that we eradicate all these unsafe practices and deaths on the waterfront. Tell me, tell me what's uh, happened this morning at the conference. What, what are some of the things you touched on? I uh, touched on uh, the building our new safety campaign to improve safety on the waterfront. We had a guest speaker that spoke about the incident at Toll, which was really a powerful speech. And we're moving on tomorrow to talk about the four different areas to escalate our safety campaign. How would you describe uh, safety on the job where you work, personally? Uh, safety on the job where I was from was pretty lax about two or three years ago, but since then we've improved our number of HSRs from one at our port to four, and statewide we've gone from three to nine. How does the HSR, have you been writing any pins? Has that happened in your work? No, place? we haven't done any pins yet at our workforce at the but uh, Bell Bay. I don't think there's been any written in Tasmania, to be honest. I think we need uh, consistency. I well, just talk to some guys where we work. We, have, we do have hatchmen and those sort of things. Where other births, they don't they do the same job, so they'll have a different set of rules for doing exactly the same job. I think we need consistency across the board. What was your reaction when you heard that um, Anthony Adard got killed, like a wolf of six to the job you were doing, got killed in Melbourne? What, what, did, you, what did you think when you heard the news? Well, I was, I was a little bit scared for our work group because I was thinking, well, we work with Matthews every day. We're on row row. We're, we're in a similar sort of industry. Oh, well, they are a lot larger than what we are. But I was thinking, well, if it can happen there, it can happen with us. And I wasn't sure what was going to come of this. <laughs> But I was hoping it could only be a positive that the Maritime Union of Australia put it together to actually better the safety, safety culture. Oh! 
the police have turned around and asked us to uh, remove ourselves from the building or face potential arrest. We raised the issue with the managers up there in terms of the, the mafia and the disgraceful act uh, in putting that mafia or not removing that mafia from the job. We raised the issue here about the disgraceful behaviour of the managers in terms of their behaviour in saying, well, this is no different than a pedestrian crossing the road and that's life. Um, those issues have been raised and I think that we need to pursue those issues further to make sure that um, we seek um, some kind of resolution in terms of uh, both Anthony, his family and the workers down in Melbourne to make sure that uh, those things, that, that the managers down there are held accountable for those despicable actions. Stop the death toll! 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 inside the building to protest, uh, to make a point to management that um, we want less deaths on the waterfront and they're not going to stop. Um, Anthony Attard's death is now highlighted again um, the need for the National Safety Code of uh, Practice. Um, and this union now is full focus with all the delegates and the rank and file taking them with us. And um, you're going to see a lot more of this, I believe. Uh, you know, whether it be Q, Toll, Patrick's, whoever it is, our members deserve a right to go home safely to their loved ones. And uh, this union is going to fight from the front in respect to that. The legislation, what the Liberal government wanted to introduce, and what the companies like Toll wanted to introduce, is no safety depths, is uh, no investigations if someone's injured on the job. Um, and there's no right of access to union officials to inspect the site or safety reps to inspect the site. You know, we're going backwards a hundred years if this legislation takes place the way the Liberal Party and the way some of these companies want. Um, they believe we're a number, we believe otherwise and we, we believe that you've got to go home sick from work and, you know, we're going to continue to fight for a national safety code of practice. That actually makes sure that companies are accountable and can be prosecuted uh, for un unsafe acts on the waterfront, and we're determined to get that. Why is it in Australia that no CEOs, CEOs ever go to jail? They um, never get charged with manslaughter, it never ever happens, ever. Well, there's, there, that, it's a really good question, and um, it's one that should be enshrined in legislation. Um, you know, they're always blaming workers for everything, and as far as we're concerned, you know, the, some of these CEOs should be put in jail and some of these CEOs should be fronting the Royal Commission of their inactions in respect of what they're doing for workers' safety. We had a supervisor come down and address the um, workforce after the trailer that killed him was welded onto the replacement vessel. And the supervisor came down and said, you should actually treat that as a positive when you come up the ramp to the weather deck, when you see that trailer, you should have, remember Anthony, disrespect it. Uh, the manager said, um, this, this death is no different than uh, a pedestrian fatality. We've got to move on, We've got to move forward. What he was virtually saying is, we've got to move on with the business. We've got to get the ship unloaded. We've got to get the ship loaded. That's what it was all about. So out, out they came. We told them we were there to. Uh, we explained that a, man, a man's been killed, Anthony Attard, uh, father of three, um, left behind a wife and kids, uh, and killed in entirely preventable circumstances, and it's a disgrace. And we explained to him on the very day of Anthony's funeral in Melbourne, uh, Toll's representative, the Australian Logistics Council, called out, came out publicly calling for the safety code of practice for Stephen Orton to be scrapped. Um, it's a disgraceful situation. We asked us for him to get a representative for the board and that we wouldn't leave until we had a representative from the board of Toll um, to explain why this disgraceful conduct. In the last two years, health and safety reps through the union and with support from the union have campaigned for safety on the job in every work site. More than 500 health and safety reps have been elected, trained, we've got networks of trained HSRs on the job, 
on, on every in every port and on every waterfront site. But there's still a crisis in safety in Stevedore. Still, too many wharfies are hurt. Too many families have to go through what happened to Anthony Attar's family. What happened to Greg Fitzgibbon's family? And there's continues to be a crisis in the industry. So, what's been done so far is not enough. We've got to do more.